Welcome to a roadshow shootout where I am representing England, the land of the Queen. T, Stephen Fry, mild alcoholism and hand-built sports cars. And I've scored myself the keys to the new to America Lotus Evora 400, a 400 horsepower mid-engine coupe built in a place called Norfolk. And I'm representing America with this red, white and blue Corvette Grand Sport built in a place called Kentucky. It has 460 horsepower and weighs just 3,252 pounds. Well, the little car from Norfolk is lighter than that. It weighs in at just 3,153 pounds, which might just be enough to make up for the 60 horsepower deficit it's packing, but it probably won't be enough to make up for your 6.2 litre V8's 465 pound foot. My three and a half litre supercharged V6 kicks out barely more than 300. It's enough to get you to 60 in 4.1 seconds. My Corvette is a full half a second quicker. It's also a lot cheaper. You can get into one of those for just over $90,000, but the Grand Sport starts at just $65,000. Although this one's got the carbon ceramic brakes and the extra aero bits, which means they actually cost about the same. Well, you talk a big game about your Corvette, and I think the only way to show you that British is best is go around the track, shall we? Let's so Tim, welcome to the Lotus Evora 400, the first new Lotus in America for ages, and ages and ages and ages, and compared to the old car, a lot has changed. So you've got obviously a new engine with 400 horsepower, they've sorted out the getting in and out bit because the old car had very high wide cells and it was a bit of a faff to, to get in, but now they're lower, they're thinner, it's easy to get in and out, it's got a new face which makes it look way more aggressive. I mean, it looks it looks a lot sharper than the old car. And that engine you mentioned very briefly has a bit of an interesting provenance that I think you should include for our uh, viewers. <laughs> yeah, so it's got a 3.5 litre supercharged V6, uh -huh. and the supercharger sounds lovely, and the engine sounds great, and it's yeah, got that wicked right. exhaust on it. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of people have a problem with where it comes from. Which is? It, it comes from a, a, a rather large company called Toyota, who make a lot of engines, a lot of cars for America, and uh, they, it comes from a Camry. It comes from a Camry. Yeah, Camry. But it's not in a Camry. It's true. If we were in a Camry, we might have an actual infotainment system here that could do something other than whatever this thing can do, which is not very much. It, 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 yeah, it's not the sharpest of systems, I'm not going to lie, but... This isn't about interior plushness. Yes, Lotus has gone over the interior of the car to make it just a little bit sharper than before, you know. The quality of the stitching's up, the leather's up, it does still smell a bit like it, a Lotus, which is a bit does. plastic. Yes. And I will concede there are a few little build quality issues with this one. <laughs> so if uh, well, my, my wing mirror here, when you're driving, vibrates quite a lot. It also takes about 20 minutes to turn the thing on, and the sequence of buttons is a bit like launching an ICBM. It on only takes time if you don't know how to do it. If you owned it, you'd know how to do it. So it's a safety feature, is what you're it's saying? It's a safety feature, yeah, okay. so people couldn't steal it. And it's got a manual gearbox, so people who can't drive manuals, they wouldn't be able to start it, and then they won't be able to shift it. But rather than all the kind of interior plushness and tech, the Lotus is really all about handling, and that's something they do immensely well. We've got four-way traction control, which learns the road and adapts the car to do whatever you want it to do, depending on the conditions. We've got super sticky Michelins, a proper limb to slip diff, it's proper. I don't know if it's better than my Corvette, though, especially for the same money, basically. Mm, yeah, but mine is lighter. Mine may not be quicker to 62, but I'll bet you any money it can get around a corner quicker. This is near as damn it as quick as an Exige. And Exiges are seriously fast cars. Corvettes seriously. are pretty quick, too. Yeah, but around corners, man. How many people do you think have actually been in the back seat of one of these? Should we give it a go? I'm down with giving it a go, because you're you quite tall, and yeah. I'm not. Why don't we do that? Let's yeah. uh, <laughs> pull over somewhere safe and see who can get in the back seat without giving themselves a hernia. Right. Going forward. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is this nowhere for my feet. Well, I don't know about you, Tim, but I feel great. <laughs> I don't even think you can feel like a four-year-old back here. My feet are stuck. <laughs> I've lost my shoe. <laughs> I'm leaving it behind. You know what? That's the most comfortable car I've ever been in. And I've driven many a Come Rolls on, Royce. the Corvette. Okay, Corvette time. Oh, God. Welcome, good sir, to the spacious accommodations of the Corvette Grand Sport. This car has all the best bits from the Z06. Suspension and brakes. 
not the engine, but everything else that you want for a track-ready American sports car. And this thing feels absolutely fantastic out here. We've got enough grip to pull 1.2 Gs on the skin pad, which is what's rearranging my face right now. Rippy Michelin tires on all four cars, just like the Lotus. Big carbon ceramic brakes. And man, everything that you need to have a real good time out here. It, it does feel quite quite good. You've got 460 horsepower, mm -hmm. which is 60 more than me, but you do have more weight. I will. I'm going to uh, jive me about that. So. And so what's the deal? You have adaptive modes, whereas my car was perfect from the factory. <laughs> you guys feel the need to like have a wet mode and a, a, and a track mode. And five separate track modes, so you can dial in the car based on how much grip you've got. Today, the tracks went a little greasy this morning, so we'll run on number three, which is kind of a nice in between. But you dialed all the way up, and this thing last year lets you have a lot of good fun and you can record how much fun you're having because it has a performance data recorder which puts a camera up behind the mirror here and record how you do on the track your throttle position your brake position how many g's you're pulling so when you do get that 1.2 g's <laughs> you can then put it on youtube and show all your friends Whee! <laughs> all right but your track mode i've had a go in this it's good apart from one very vital element the steering oh, yeah. it's it, you, you, it, it's it's awful I'll give you that. It firms up the suspension, which of course you want, but it also unfortunately firms up the steering, and suddenly it feels like someone poured molasses into the power steering unit, which is a bit unfortunate. But come on, is that the biggest thing you can complain about in this car? Um, well, the, the red interior is quite hideous. Uh, I suppose so, but it does go with the red, white, and blue exterior. And come on, what other color could you possibly want on a Grand Sport? Well, the colors of the Union flag are obviously the best uh, colors. Oh, don't go there, my obviously. friend. Obviously. Don't go there. Yes. I will say your engine's in the wrong place. Mine, mine is better for handling balance, finesse. A wise man once said that a horse does not push a cart. Yes, but the horse will be much happier when it's sitting down in it. I suppose that depends on the cart, and yeah, uh, maybe also on the size of the horse. Which actually, compared to your motor, yours is about 6.2 litres, mine's 3.5, which is, in this company, nothing. In the rest of the world, that's actually quite large. And there's absolutely no replacement for displacement, my friend. Ooh, apart from lightweight, but along that line, <laughs> along those lines, I have a challenge for you. Yeah? Your car can get from 0 to 60 in what, 3.6, 3.7? And it can go on a lot further after that as we're seeing And it will go on to a million, billion miles an hour. <laughs> Mine is 4.1, 4 seconds-ish. You can get a 60 faster, but can you get it from 60 faster? Are you talking about braking? I propose a braking test, my friend. This I is could. where my lightweight, Colin Chapman's ethos, his dream, will come to fruition. All right, let's do it. Let's go get the Lotus. So Tim, we've been out on the track. The Evora handles brilliantly, I would say a little bit better than your Corvette, but the Corvette has more power mm -hmm. and more toys, is a bit mm -hmm. plusher, a bit better all-rounder. So I've come up with a little bit of a test that might give the Lotus the edge, maybe. A biased test is what you're saying? Not biased, just it's, it's a test of braking. Okay. Because it's very important. You have a lot of weight in carbon brakes. I have less weight, but not carbon brakes. Not carbon brakes made by AP Racing, I see on the caliper there. Lotus has motorsport heritage, my friend, so it's, it's all good, it's all good. What we're going to do is we're going to be on this little strip here, going to start at that end, drive up to 60 miles an hour, and then when you get here, slam the anchors on, and we're going to see who stops in the shortest distance. And it'll be me, and I'm going to go first. Good luck. <laughs> Being lightweight does have some advantages, I it think. It does rather, chap, you know, but you put up a valiant effort, so, uh, nah. Nah. Three, big three.
Alex, my friend, I think we must call that a comprehensive victory on the drag strip. You did rather destroy me. And for a couple of times, I was almost keeping up, but then the talk monster took over and, and my little Lotus just went bye-bye. Mm -hmm. But I did win the brake test. You did. Uh, Practicality-wise, I don't really think that Lotus is very practical. I don't even know why they put back seats in that thing. For very small children or people that you don't like. Presumably. And I really like that you can take the roof off the Corvette, which you cannot do in the Lotus. Well, there will be a convertible Evora eventually, fear not. But, handling-wise, mm -hmm. the Lotus is better. It is better, but the Corvette's pretty great, you gotta admit it. The Corvette is fantastic, but you get in the Lotus and the steering's mm -hmm. lovely and all it's that. True. But there's no technology, there's no real boot space. I think I know which way this is going, and yeah. I don't want it to go there. I'm gonna make you say it. Yeah. The winner of the Roadshow Shootout is the Corvette Grand Sport, mm -hmm. with a very close second for the Lotus. Very, very close. <laughs>